Amen. All right. We're excited on today. Hope you guys are as well. Oh, yes. All right. Hey, so on today, we're going to start a new series, and the series is titled Finish Strong. Somebody say, Finish Strong. All right. Three people. I get four people this time. Finish say, Finish Strong. Finish Strong. Absolutely. I say that because. Um, it's important that we finish strong in this season. We're the season right now. We're in the what tenth month? This ninth, ninth, tenth month, tenth month of the year. And mm -hmm. some of us have gone through some trying times. All right now. Some of us have gone through some trying times. Some of us have gone through some some trying times, and we simply need to be reminded. To finish strong. Last quarter. Finish strong. We're in the last quarter. We're in the last 15 yards of this 100 yeah. mile uh, hurdle that we got to run and we got to finish strong. Yeah. We can't give up right now. Amen? Amen. We got to finish strong. That's, and you know, that's the challenge because sometimes we, we start out with a zeal. Sometimes we start out real hungry and then life hits us and kind of takes the air out of us. You know what that's called? Life. Yeah. It's called life. Yeah. Yeah. So let me give you some scripture real quick. I want to go to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. Chapter 13. A lot I want to give you, but I'm just going to kind of move around through this uh, chapter 13. I will fill in the blanks. Give you scripture and um, you can go back and search it out. That's what the Bereans did. They searched the scripture, see if what the man of God said was so. Mm -hmm. So, Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, it reads. Let me set this up for you real quick. Now, you know, this is the story of how when Moses um, led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And so uh, on their way to the land that's flowing with milk and honey called Canaan, mm -hmm. they have to make a pit stop in the desert or the wilderness. It's called the Desert of Paran. Mm -hmm. And so in there, uh, God gives them instructions on what to do next. Isn't it amazing how we go through this process of life and God gives us instructions on what to do next. We start out and we don't know all the details. We don't see everything that's going to happen. And that's where we have to begin to trust God. Because when you don't know all the details and you got to walk blindly, that's called faith. That's called trust. And that's what God requires of us to trust him. Even when you don't know what's next, God desires that you trust him. And so that's what he was doing to the children of Israel. The Bible declares that he talked with Moses, a prophet of God. He said he talked to Moses face to face. Now, other prophets, he talked, with, talked to them through dreams, through visions. But the Bible declares that he talked with Moses face to face. So in Numbers, chapter 13, verse 1. The Lord now said to Moses, send out men to explore the land of Canaan. The land I am given to the Israelites, send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. Verse 3. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He sent out, the, he sent out 12 men, all tribal leaders of Israel, from their camp in the wilderness of Paran. In verses 4 through 16, it tells you who those tribal leaders are. So he chose um, one leader from each of the 12 tribes of Israel on um, verses 4 through 16. He gets down to verse 17. And he says, Moses gave these men instructions and he sent them out to explore the land. He says, go north through the Negev into the hill country. See what the land is like. And find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or bad? Do their towns have walls or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? 
Do your best to bring back samples of the crops you see. Watch this, this is important right here. It says, it happened to be the season for harvesting the first bright grapes. All right. so, God, so, Mo, so God gives Moses instructions on what to do, how many to see, and, he, and Moses gives the instructions to the 12 spies that he sent out. Moses even tells them what to look for and, mm. and, and, and uh, see what the people look like and see what the land was like. Yeah. He says, go spy out the land. And Moses says, for confirmation, watch this, he says, for confirmation, it's the right season. It's the season that grapes should be coming about by now. Mm. He says, so for confirmation, for the unbelievers who don't believe this word, who don't believe the promise that God made unto us, he says, for the unbelievers, bring back some grapes. Uh, bring, yeah, bring, bring back some grapes. Mm. So the people will see the promise that God has made unto us. That's important. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. So he says, bring back, bring back some confirmation of this promise that God said he was going to do. All right. I'm going to jump down to verse 30 real quick. In verse 30. All right. Verse 30. So it says this. It says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 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 20 through 29. It talks about it talks about the report that the guys brought back. It says they brought back a report. The land is everything that you see. It's full of the honey. It has resources. Uh, it has all of these things. Right. And then they go on to say, uh, but but the, the Anites and the, all these. He says it's giants right. in that land. Mm -hmm. Is everything you say? It's full of milk and honey. Uh -huh. The promises are there. The resources are there. Mm -hmm. All the financial increase that mm -hmm. God promised you is there. Right. Mm -hmm. Peace is there. Mm -hmm. Everything you need is there. Okay, but. but. Okay. but. <laughs> says there are giants in the land. Mm -hmm. So they bring back information. They bring back information. They brought back a report. And we get to verse 30. It says this. Verse 30. It says, but Caleb mm -hmm. tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Mm -hmm. Caleb said, let's go at once to take the land. He said, we can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. <laughs> so they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes wow. to live there. All the people we saw were huge. Wow. Verse 33. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anite. Next to them, we felt mm -hmm. like grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. it, has anybody been in a situation where you don't feel like, you just feel like this situation is so much bigger than you? Mm -hmm. You just feel like this situation is going to consume yeah, 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 you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. just feel I like feel you, like whatever like God told like you, mm -hmm. this situation mm -hmm. consumes the promise that God has given unto mm -hmm. you. And it says, and that's what they, and that's that's what they thought too. So we thought at first, we we felt it. I'm talking about like like they didn't even the, the the giants, the people didn't even touch them or anything. They said we felt it. You know, then it's a situation where you just it just makes you all boo boo in your stomach and feel like you get butterflies, like you you feel the situation. And it says that. They, it says, and, and we look like that to them too. I got a question. Mm -hmm. They were spying out the land. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a spy, I go into a land, and I'm spying out the land, nobody should see me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's two things. There's either two conclusions that you can conclude from this. They was, they, 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 they was, their own mind or their own thoughts was consuming them, or they were just some bad spies. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
because it said that they was fine to lay it out. And it, their thought said, we, we felt like grasshoppers to them, and they thought we were too. How did they know what they thought? How did they know what they thought? How did they know? How did they know what they were thinking? Yeah. How did they know? So if you're not careful, you will begin to conjure up your own thoughts, your own ideology, your own way of thinking about things. And the promises, the problems will consume the promises of God. Watch this. It's absolutely amazing to me. This 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 scripture, this, this uh, chapter right here is so prophetic because it says that they sent 10 spies out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they sent 12 out. Uh -huh. 10 came back uh -huh. with some bad information. <laughs> Watch this. We're in the 10th month of this year. Uh -huh. and, and these first 10, 10 months, if the truth be told, has given us some, some, some a bad report. Uh -huh. I'm talking about racial tensions at an all-time high. COVID-19 is just running rapid. Yeah. I mean, we people are losing jobs. I mean, like, these 10 months have given us some a bad report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still got two months left All in this right. year. God, this is an absolutely amazing thing. The Bible declares that Joshua and Caleb, they came back with a different report. Uh -huh. It says that when the 10 spies came and given this bad report, Caleb jumps up and he tries, he tells them to shut up. You need to tell November, December, they need to tell January through October to shut up. No matter what has came at you or what the report is through these first 10 months, the promises of God will consume the problems. I'm right now. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible declares that Moses, mm. Moses sent them out. Watch this. This, 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 this. Moses sent them out for confirmation. Mm -hmm. Walk with me. Uh -huh. Moses said, go spy it out. Uh -huh. Because God had already told oh. Moses where they were going, yeah, yeah, yeah. what was going to be there uh -huh. when they got there. He said it's going to be land, flowing milk, and honey. It's going to be unlimited resource. He said it's going to be people in that land, but I am going to drive them out for you. Mm. The only thing you have to do is go and possess it. Mm. Somebody got to get it. It's like, like you got to be so, like, so yeah, uh, yeah, heavy yeah, and walking yeah, in faith yeah. in this season. I ain't saying yeah. try this, but you walking in that level of faith that you walk, need to be able to walk in a car line and just tell the sales that that's my car right there. Right. <laughs> that, 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 that's my house right there. Why? Because God, the only thing you got to do is possess it. So, so watch this, watch this. Moses says, go spy it out because this is what you see, should see. This is what you should see. And in verse 20, he says, and bring back some grapes because it's the season that grapes should be grown. Watch this. And then in, in, in verse 23, in verse 23, it says, what? The, the last thing Moses tells them in verse 17, he says, he says in verse 17, the last thing Moses tells them before they went out, he said, hey, cut, cut, cut it down. He said, and, and, and when you come back, bring back some grain. In verse 23, the men, they explored the land. They seen everything that happened. They seen the giant. They seen it was land flowing milk and honey. And the last thing they did before they came back was God confirmed it. The Bible declares that they cut clusters yeah. of great off. So large. So large mm -hmm. that two, two of them, two of them two. had to bring it back. Mm. Had, like, can you imagine that? Like, like we go to the store, we get a bag of grapes. And like, we just walk around with it. But the Bible declares that it, those grapes were so long. All right, now. Signifying that the blessings that God has for yeah. you and your people yeah. are going to be so long yeah. that it, it's going to be enough for you, your buddies, your friends, your family, and everybody. Somebody ought to shout. Come on, come on. He said that they were so long that two people had to bring them back. So watch this. 
God confirms it. So Moses sends them out for confirmation. What did they do? They bring back information. Watch this. I'm finna walk with I'm finna walk y'all down this real quick. So so <laughs> Moses says, hey, everything that God said is already there. If you need some Bible, when did God tell them that God, if you go back to Exodus 3, uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 3, verses 8 through 17, the Bible declares before, hey, watch this, before they, they, they're still, if you study this scripture out right here, Moses hadn't even really became the Savior yet. In this right here, he's actually talking on the backside of the desert, talking to God from the burning bush. God says, I've heard the cry of my people, and it has reached me. And he says, you're going to lead the people out of bondage into a land flowing with milk and honey. God says, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, it's going to be all of that. But watch this. The people were still in Egypt. They were still in bondage. And God comes to the man of God and tells him, this is where I'm going to take you. This is what's going to happen. And this is what you're going to experience when you get there. Mm. In the midst of them being in bondage, God tells them what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the midst of whatever you're going through, God, tell me. God says, I'm bringing you out of this. Yes, God. And when you get to where you are going, it's going to be a land yeah, full of milk and honey. Yeah. If there is lack, where I'm taking you, it's going to be more than enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be running over. It's going to be an abundance of everything that I have promised unto you. Uh, 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 uh. So watch this though. Watch this. In Exodus 3, in uh, Exodus 3, verse 8, I'm not going to read all this, but it says that Moses, uh, so, I, so I come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own Someone said own. own. Not, not nobody else, as he said, but their own they full own. and spacious land. Yes. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hattites, and Amorites, Paras Parasites, Hevites, and Jebusites now live. Uh -huh. Says, look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them says, now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people. You shall lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. Now watch this. God come to tell Moses. God come to tell and confirms with Moses what I'm going to do. How I'm going to lead the people out. What I'm going to do for them. Where I'm taking them. And watch what Moses does. God gives Moses confirmation. Yeah. Moses begins to give God information. <laughs> Moses says, watch this, Moses protested God, and he says, who am I, who am I? to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people out of, Is of Israel out of Egypt? Moses was saying, I don't have a title. I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a king. My name is not great. Uh, like, like, I don't have any of those accolades that the other people had when, when you want to use somebody great. So Moses begins to give God information that overcame the confirmation uh, or the promises of God. Uh, Watch this. So he did all that, and this, and we and we jump back to um, numbers. Mm. The men, the ten spies, when they came back from Canaan, they brought Moses information. Now here, now here's the challenge with information. The information could be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Information may be facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God's word always supersedes facts. Yeah, yeah, Somebody caught yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
When God gives you a blessing or give you a word, it is often in seed form. What does that mean? God, when God blesses you or give you a promise, is rarely in totality at that time. Your faith is what will water that seed. Your faith. See, see, the promises of God hover here. And so your faith has to take you to the promise. God is never going to give you a promise in, in, its, in its mature form. Mm. Your faith is what will water that. Your faith water. Yes, the woman with the issue of blood. Healing was already waiting on her. The Bible declares that her faith <laughs> to walk with him mm. made her whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her faith the Bible declared that the lame man that was at the pool of Bethesda, his faith made him to where he was able to get up and walk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The people that you read about in scripture that was blind, sight was already there. Their faith is what watered that seed to allow them to see. Where you are, your faith is going to get you past that. Yes. 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 Where you are, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you desire as it aligns with God's will, mm -hmm. is already waiting on you. You guys heard me say this often. You cannot work God. God is not getting out of the throne and coming for you. He's not. Your faith gets you to God. Yeah, yeah, God yeah. doesn't come down to you. God <laughs> demands and requires you come to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he says that all that diligently seek him, he yeah. rewards them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, all yeah. you who are heavy burdened, burden. come unto me. He says, and how do you this? Uh -huh. But you got to get from where you are to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to walk by faith. faith and not by what you see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you these last two things. I'm going to get out of here. So, so, so what am I saying? So I just made up this word. Y'all have to roll with it, right? So uh, I call this contingent faith. Some of us have a contingency faith. Simply meaning that you know, the word contingent meant like, hey, um, it's, it's, it, 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 like, you work, it happens, this will happen based off this, uh -huh. right? I was like, continue, like the word continue, like, it's to be continued, like, that's not the end of it. So, so long as this, things are going good and uh -huh. the good doesn't stop, I believe. Ah, all right, all right now. <laughs> and the, and the it, 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 like, like it's, it's dependent on circumstances. It's dependent ah, on situations. It, it depends on, like, how I'm feeling. It depends on if I got money in the account. It depends ah, on, like, ah, if me and the ah. other, we in a good, good place right now. It depends on if everything is going right at the job. It depends on if you are, uh, like, I'm happy with you. All right, it all depends right. on if you hadn't got on my last nerve. All right, all right now. <laughs> Woman, a man, it, it depends. It, it, you know what? It just depends on what day it is. All right now. It just depends on what day it is. All right. Contingent <laughs> Yeah, like, like this has to line up in order for me to believe. Like this has to line. This has to continue to happen in order for me to walk in faith. But the minute that the good stop being good, then faith is going out the window. Wow. Here's the thing about a uh, contingent faith. Like it is. It's, it's not predictable. It's, it's not predictable. Like, you can't predict what's going to happen. You say, as long as this happens, then uh -huh. I am good. Uh -huh. But the minute the good stop being good, uh -huh. then I'm out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Help us, 
Lord. It's determined by situations. Mm. It's determined by the circumstances. It's determined by what day of the week it is. Wow. It's Monday, I don't feel like it. We get to say things like, I mean, it's, 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 it's Monday been coming up the Sunday for 6,000 years. We <laughs> just begin to get to say things like, oh, man, I was Monday, oh my God. <laughs> Man says, man says, show me and I'll bleed you. God says, trust me, then I'll show you. Man says, show me, then I'll bleed. God says, trust me, then I'll show you. Trust me, then I'll show you. So in order for you to finish strong in this season, you gotta have a finishing faith. You gotta have a unshakable yes. faith. You gotta have a faith that says no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the situation is, yes. no matter how like like he done got on my last nerve, but I right. just ain't feeling him today. All right. I ain't feeling him today. But I know what God said. I know what God said. All right. God I know the promises that God promised me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what He said. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of faith that you gotta have. Like you're not, you're not driven by the situation. That's right, Pastor. But you're driven by what God said God, about, about the situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me give you this. You come too far to quit, to quit, and you are too close to give up. You have come too far to quit, too far. and you are too close to give up. Yeah. 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 Second thing is, you got to have the spirit and attitude of Caleb. What did Caleb? Caleb says, "Hey, I." Yeah, yeah. I, I was. It, isn't it amazing how you can be in the same situation with a person, but you perceive that situation different? It says twelve spies went out. Ten came back with a bad report. Two came back and said it's ours for the taking. Isn't it amazing? Like, like you, husband and wife, you can sit be sitting right next to each other right now, and you can get something different out of what I'm, I'm saying right now. Like, like. You perceive your perception is different. different yeah. So I put this down as well. Attitude determines altitude, how high you go, and also longitude, how far you go. Mm -hmm. okay. See, see, we all attitude. It attitude determines your altitude, how high you go. But attitude also determines how long you can stay in this fight. How long are you going to wait on the promise of God? I'm going to wait on the promise of God until I see it. That's an attitude. You got to have an attitude that no matter what happens, I'm going to trust God in this situation. It doesn't matter what the situation is saying. I'm going to trust God. That's my attitude. Yeah. That's it. Next thing is this. In your, in your season of transition, you have to quiet the opposition. In your season of transition, you have to quiet the opposition. Why do I say that? In verse 30 of Numbers 13, it says that when the ten were given the bad report, it says, Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Your situations right now may be talking loud and just screaming at you. Mm -hmm. And God has us in this season of transition where he's trying to do something through us. So you got to tell the situation, whatever mountain it is, to hush up and be quiet. You, you, like, like my kids, I, I, you, my kids, I hear them say, shut up. And I'm like, no, no, that's me. Just tell them to be quiet. But in this season, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta let it rip. You gotta tell your situation, just shut up in this season. Yeah. All right. All right. You gotta tell the situation to just shut up. That's right, that's right. Come on. Last thing I want to give you is this. Is that God in you is bigger than the circumstances 
around. Yeah, yeah, it's good.